So part of our throwback podcast series and our videos here is to introduce really cool people who do really cool things in the world of throwbacks. I'm Tony Larino from Throwback Nation Radio, and I am so pleased to have with us today Victoria Fedden. Victoria is a humor author and professor, uh, teaches English at two different universities in South Florida, Nova Southeastern University and Palm Beach State College. And she has a piece that for those of us that grew up in the 70s and 80s, man, it's just going to touch your heart this holiday season. Victoria, welcome here to Throwback Nation Radio and to all of us uh, across the Throwback Nation. Thanks for joining us and taking just a minute or two today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk about this. I found your piece online, and I don't remember how or where I stumbled into it. It was probably off of Facebook, so we're not going to say that Facebook is a cesspool of all things bad, <laughs> <laughs> but I stumbled into this a, a couple of years ago, and a lot of people are talking, Victoria, about this being one of the most nostalgic Christmases and holiday seasons that a lot of people are going to encounter. So we'll get into that in just a moment. But tell us a little bit of your background and how you started writing. You've written one novel. You're working on your second as we speak. Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, my background is um, I am from southern Delaware. I grew up in a very small town. Very, um, it looks like the town from It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> Main Street, it hasn't quite turned into Pottersville yet, luckily. Yeah. Though. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's picturesque, uh, typical Norman Rockwell small town. Mm -hmm. And I lived for most of my childhood with my grandparents. So I grew up in the late 70s and early 80s, although living with grandparents, it was also kind of like living in the 1950s. Sure. <laughs> they were from that generation. So very traditional, had big, big family, lots of cousins, lots of aunt and uncles. Everybody lived pretty nearby. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I really grew up having really big holiday get togethers with a lot of extended family members. And, you know, a lot of different kind of personalities were there. So it really lent itself to a lot of humor, I guess you could say. And so that very colorful people. Yeah. And uh, great storytellers. My family was really, really steeped in the oral tradition. And just from the time I was a small child, I had a natural affinity for writing and storytelling. And I would write little books and little stories all the time. And I just kind of pursued that as I got older and went to college. I really just kept doing what I liked and what I was good at, which was English and writing stories. And now here I am. <laughs> Boom. Well, the piece that we want to spend some time talking about today is called Christmas in the 70s versus Christmas Today. And this is not, uh, is this from your book actually, Victoria? Was this it's an not actually, no. no, it was an independent okay. piece that, that I just spontaneously wrote. And this first came out about five years ago, right? Uh, yes, in 2015, I wrote it. Mm -hmm. so, and I've since updated. I usually do an update and I'm considering doing an update this year too. Um, as I pull this up uh, and, and look back at this piece um, about, uh, the J.C. Penny Christmas catalog, and the one that really the 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 imagery that you tell um, a couple. I'm just going to read a couple excerpts here real quick. You just mentioned about let the kids. You know, you, we're talking about a, a Christmas celebration in the '70s, and it might as well be in the early '80s because it feels like about. Yeah, the, yeah. I I grew up in Wisconsin, so we might have been a decade behind everything as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. <laughs> it might have been the same time period, but um, you know, just a couple things. Let the kids play with their favorite gift of the Christmas season: cousins. The adults can have Irish coffee, fruitcake, and a few bench, Benson and Hedges in the family <laughs> yeah. room while the snow falls outside because it always snows. It did. Christmas. It used to snow all the time. And we had a lake in the center of our town and it would freeze over so that we could go skating on it. It's like 80 degrees now in December. Yeah. And the Benson and Hedges, I, as I joked with you earlier, the Benson and Hedges in my family, I think were Winston's and Salem's and grandma smoked Paul Malls. And uh, oh, my grandfather smoked Paul Malls unfiltered. Yes. Yeah. My grandma smoked Paul Malls, but she never wanted anybody to know that she smoked. So she would smoke in the laundry room in the basement, uh, put it out 
under the faucet in the stationary tub and then wrap them in Kleenex. Thank God none of the embers ever caught on fire in the laundry room or Grandma Emily would have really ruined Christmas for all of us, Victoria. But when you were writing this piece, it sounds like a lot of your history, your experiences growing up were what was fueling this nostalgic feel. Were you feeling as nostalgic in 2015 as you're feeling this Christmas looking back at the past so so fondly? Uh, yes, but I do feel that in 2020 with everything that's happened with COVID that I'm feeling more nostalgic and more of a need for that comfort that comes mm -hmm. with those good memories. So yeah, I, yeah, I'm feeling more nostalgic now for sure. The power of nostalgia and I, I talk about some of those vivid memories and and whether it's the cigarettes or the Irish coffee or it always snowing on Christmas or the cousins um, what are the things you've had people reach out to you in the last five years since that this has been written I'm sure oh, what, yes. are the, what are the things that they say oh my gosh the, the the two or three pieces of imagery that you wrote about in there that really have have stuck with people I think a lot of people really remember um, those catalogs, those big, thick catalogs that would come in the mail. They would come, it seems like, before Halloween. And mm -hmm. you would go through and you would flip through and you would circle everything that you wanted, knowing very well you were not going to get all of it. But you would just go on like this wild circling and be like, I want that and I want the rock polisher and I want that toy and I want the Star Wars set. And there was like this incredible glee with doing that that everybody can relate to. Um, another thing is, um, the tinsel on the tree, just like covering the tree in tinsel and the blinking lights, it was so tacky <laughs> by our standards. And um, you had to spray the ornaments with hairspray because they would fray. And everybody thought that, that, that if you sprayed the threads with some Aquanet, of course, it was like the uh, aerosol hairspray. To right. <laughs> you spray like, shh, every single ornament so that the, the threads on it wouldn't get fuzzy and fray. And that what, was one thing a lot of people remembered. Um, the flocking where you would have, do you remember the spray snow? And everybody would put it on their windows, on yep. the tree. Mm -hmm. Everything was sprayed with that, that white um, stuff. Uh, the fruitcake, the food. People talk about the food a mm -hmm. lot. That retro food. Yeah, you talk about Watergate salad, jello okay. molds, jello molds, jello molds, jello molds. Um, and, and the best is, you know, not just Christmas Eve and Christmas Day itself, but on the 26th and 27th, where you have tubs of butter and tubs of Cool Whip, and you have no idea what's in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it, no. It's that not. Cool family. Whip. We did not have a Tupperware set. We had yeah. old butter containers. Well, actually, margarine. I don't even think we had butter. We had old yeah. margarine containers. Mm -hmm. And it would have like sweet potatoes in one, the Watergate salad in another. And by the way, my family still has Watergate salad <laughs> at every get together. And if you have listeners who don't know what that is, here's the recipe, okay? okay. You take a tub of Cool Whip, okay. take a package of dry pistachio pudding powder. Right. Don't make the pudding, just put the powder in the Cool Whip. Got it. A can of crushed pineapple, a bag of mini marshmallows and some chopped walnuts and stir it all up together and you got it. That's Watergate salad right there. You can put some maraschino cherries on top. If That's you what I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah go you got to have the red and the green contrast. Right. Exactly. And, and, and the, the gold just kind of folds right into the whole thing from the pineapple. Mm -hmm. So if you're just joining us, Victoria uh, Fedden is our guest here today and she is an author, a humor author. And uh, we're talking about her, her piece called Christmas in the seventies versus Christmas today. Victoria, you're actually getting ready to work on and release a second book. And uh, this is a little bit of, you know, those of us that consider ourselves, whether we're Gen Xers or Xennials, uh, I, I technically consider myself a Xennial. So I'm on that cusp of millennial and, and Gen X, where you can look at the Gen X and say, yeah, I'm that. And then you can look at millennial and say, no, I'm that. A little bit of both. And then you have your own. Uh, we were the ones that learned everything on analog and then had to switch to digital halfway through that's oh. that's my group but um the the gen x experience of being a kid is what you're going to be talking about in, in your new book and and mm -hmm. then trying to translate it to kids today and that translation it's not quite apples to apples yeah it really isn't some things haven't aged well i found out the hard way although other things have there are a lot of the great things from our old-fashioned childhoods that we can recreate for our children today. Mm -hmm. But there are also a lot of things that I found in kind of experimenting that, that we really can't. And a lot of those have to do with um, 
some of the old movies and TV shows and things that we used to watch. And I realized that when we look back on them, we tend to not remember what was actually in some of those old programs. And we remember how they made us feel more than what was actually in them. So yeah. I've had a couple missteps with my daughter in trying to show her a few things. Um, but it, it's been it's been pretty fun. I, I've had fun with her. But one thing that I think that we can recreate now in 2020 mm -hmm. is like a sense of closeness with our mm -hmm. children. And that was really, I think, um, the key to how great our childhoods are when we look back with nostalgia at Christmases or summers or holidays of any kind in the past, what we're really remembering is like a certain closeness that we had like with the cousins or with the kids that we played with on our street. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing that I've discovered is that we had more um, contact with nature and the natural world. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that is still available to us, even those of us who live in the city. I mean, I live in a pretty suburban area. It's not really like I'm not living in the country anymore like I was when I was growing up. But we could still find the natural world, even at Christmas time. <laughs> even at Christmas time. I have some good stories about, uh, about my interactions with the natural world at Christmas time. Give us a little sneak peek of some of those because... I'll give you a little sneak peek. Um, I have a story that, that I wrote a while back. I haven't published it. It's called The Grand Inflammation, mm -hmm. where uh, <laughs> I was, um, actually, I lived in Atlanta when this happened. Okay. And, uh, I, I had been inspired by all natural Christmas greenery and some decorations that I had seen in Colonial Williamsburg. And I was like, you know, those are beautiful. I could recreate that. I could decorate my house with all natural materials and moss and berries and things from the woods. So I went out into the woods outside of Atlanta and uh, I ended up getting myself a wicked case of chiggers. And uh, I think they're called red bugs. So I was stung and I was all bitten up and it was all from trying to gather all of this Christmas greenery. Some things so that, are, that was a Christmas disaster, but some things better left to the professionals. In, in yeah, some uh, things are better left to the professionals. So if you are uh, gathering Christmas greenery out in the woods, be careful. You uh, I want to do a little, uh, you know, we talked a little bit before we got started here today as well about music and, and the power of music it, it, when you talk about nostalgia and Christmas. I want to give uh, a couple of uh, Christmas albums and uh, everybody. It's funny, when we talk about Christmas music in the radio business and here on Throwback Nation Radio, Christmas songs that we know and love and enjoy, it's either like the standards from the 50s and 60s, Bing Crosby, Burl Ives, I mean, that were oh, yeah. Yeah. out when our parents were kids, or it's stuff that we're talking about from the 70s and 80s. And I wanted to get your take on a couple of these because uh, there's some great 70s and 80s Christmas music. And just uh, your, you, you mentioned a couple of them in your pieces, but let's just. I do Donnie and Marie. That was my favorite as a little kid. I love the Osmonds. Still do. Osmonds are awesome. Osmonds Christmas gets number one. Let's do a couple uh, compare and contrasts here. Okay. Jackson 5 Christmas album or Christmas portrait from the Carpenters. It's going to be Christmas portrait for me because I believe in, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus is on the Jackson 5 album? It is. I'm so anti that song. I do not like I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. Why not? Oh, it, it just it invites way too many questions that I'm not comfortable <laughs> with. <laughs> way too many, way too many questions there. My daughter really was like, Mommy? <laughs> <laughs> Why was she Santa Claus? What's going on here? And I'm like, let's can we just change the subject? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, well, here's a couple more. Let's do John Denver and the Muppets Christmas versus Jose Feliciano and Feliz Navidad Christmas. Oh man. Okay, that's a hard one. I'm a huge Muppets fan. Huge. I love John Denver too. Love John Denver. Um I'm going to have to go with the Muppets, even though I love Feliz Navidad. Hey, you know we what? Sing that, we sing that every year. My daughter sings at school. It's very popular here in South Florida. My daughter loves it. That's, that's going to be, if you asked her, that would be her favorite. But for me, <laughs> man, I just, I love the Muppets. I had that Christmas album too. And we had this record player that was like a full piece of furniture. It looked like a dresser. 
Muppets, and you would open up the lid, and there was a record player inside of it, and we would put on the Muppets Christmas album. Every oh man, I love. I remember the Muppet Show used to be on at, at oh, like yeah. seven o'clock. I want to say on Sunday nights, and I would not miss it. And that was love the Muppets. The Muppets Christmas special every year. That was a must watch. Let's. Oh, let's, and Emmett Otter in the Junk Band Christmas. Do you remember that one? I don't. Oh, you have. Oh, if you could find Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, I'm it's by them. Jim Henson. Oh, it a oh, classic. Emmett Otter, the best. Otter Junk Band Christmas. Yeah, Emmett Otter's Jug Band. It's a little. It's a little kind of. It's like some otters in Appalachia and some animals. And they have a jug band. They play a washboard. Here's There's a like a, here's Battle a couple, of the band. Couple more. We're gonna go eighties. Okay? okay. Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton Christmas. Or New Kids Christmas? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, in my family, you didn't question Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. No, no, that was like canon in our family. No. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised funny. that my family members didn't have a shrine to Kenny and Dolly in our house. <laughs> <laughs> that okay. was like a religious experience, those two. Instrumental now. Oh, Man okay. Mannheim Steamroller. Or Kenny G. Oh, oh, why are you gonna do me like that? That one's hard. Uh, okay, so Mannheim Steamroller is a little intense sometimes. Uh, we have a radio station here that plays all Christmas music. Uh -huh. and my daughter and I were, were driving to get some curbside pickup. That was the quintessential 2020 experience. Right. And we were listening to it. A Mannheim Steamroller song came on, and my daughter was like, Mommy, this is a little bit scary. <laughs> <laughs> Mannheim Steamroller can be quite intense. Um, and Kenny G, Kenny G is like really chill and really nice. Uh, I, I like them both, but I think I'm going to go with the Mannheim Steamroller because I need that passion in my life sometimes. You know, I need that intensity. Christmas you know, so, needs a little adrenaline sometimes. Yeah, you, you might not get enough intensity from Kenny <laughs> G. So there's an album I want you, so you have me looking up this jug band. There's one I want to share with you as well, if you're not familiar. This is a 70s one, and this is... In fact, hold on. I don't usually do this, Victoria. I'll be back. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I found it right away. I don't normally leave in the middle of recording, but sometimes you just got good stuff you got to dig up. Okay. This one, this is my Christmas memory. The Sal Soul Orchestra Christmas Jollies. Look at that cover. Look at that. That is like, that's my childhood right there. This I yeah. have not heard of. Yes. Okay. And uh, so this woman uh, on the cover, so the Sal Soul Orchestra and Sal Soul Records was a music label, a uh, record label based in either New York or Philadelphia. I cannot remember, but um, based in the Northeast, disco, like pure disco dance of oh. the late 70s. And this woman uh, was their cover girl on a lot of their records. And it didn't always just say dance. Sometimes it said dance your blank mm -hmm. off to sell soul. That was right, so for Christmas, that's just implied. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but yeah, so her, her blank is covered up by that nice, um, that nice, uh, you know, festive, uh, whatever. You got we some fur trim there. For yeah, the fur trim. <laughs> um, but this album, uh, my grandparents had this at their house. And apparently, I grew up in Wisconsin. Apparently, this had like a random surge in popularity in the Midwest as well. Because if you play this or if you dust this album off in Wisconsin, there is a 12-minute Christmas medley discoized of, you know, Joy to the World and Deck the Halls and all these songs. And it's, it's 12 minutes of disco Christmas nostalgia that is just 1976 all over again. Oh, and I need that in my life. I got to find that. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to, you know what, when we're done, I'm going to, I'm going to get this to you. I'm going to ship you this. You could probably find it on, uh, find it on Spotify. Look, I, I'm going to look on some of the, the streaming services that I subscribe to and see if I can find something or, or maybe online. So someone, there's, everything is on YouTube. So someone has, Put it on YouTube, I'm sure. It's a, I'll never forget um, when, in fact, I love this album so much and my grandparents, this is my grandparents' copy. My, my grandfather passed away and my grandma's in assisted living. But um, when I was in college, I, you know, 
th I wanted to get it for them. You couldn't find, it was out of print on CD and it has since like popped back up. But I went, I, I used my, uh, my resources in the dorms and I got on that high speed internet and I found all these on Napster and ah, <laughs> I downloaded and bought them as CD as my Christmas present to him because I was a poor college kid and, you know, a burned CD for your grandparents. They loved it anyway. So, you know, tricks from the 2000s. What can you say? So, well, well, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure you take a taste of this and your website uh, with some of your writing and some of your sharing of nostalgia here, Victoria, for people who are really looking for a little taste of nostalgia this Christmas, you're, you're just chock full of it. And it's just chock full of it, like a chock full of nuts coffee, you know? Like a fruit cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like candy fruit. Uh, your website for people who want to take a little look, maybe reflect on some of the Christmases of the past of growing up and some of the Christmases of the mid 2010s and into today. Uh, where can people find you and learn a little bit more about your writing? Uh, it's at um, www. People don't even say that anymore, do they? But it's victoriafedden.com. That's the whole thing that you type in. I mean, actually, you don't even have to do that. See, I'm showing my age again. Like, oh. uh, I, have a, I have a public Facebook page. It's um, Facebook.com slash Victoria C. Fedden, and you'll find my Got public it. Facebook page. I uh, will occasionally do some disgusting recipe videos on there. I made a, a, a retro recipe over the summer. I post various things, whatever I'm thinking of, I'll post. Sometimes I write shorter pieces you can find on my Facebook. Watergate salad? You know, I really should make a video with a Watergate salad demonstration. I think I'm inspired. And I'm Irish coffee. That. And if, oh, you yeah. can, if you can find a pack of Benson and Hedges, just go buy them. <laughs> Don't smoke them. Just go That's buy them. One. Just for, for the sake of celebrating. Hey, maybe I could find candy cigarettes. Do you remember the oh, candy yeah. cigarettes when you were little? Oh, man, we yeah. loved them. We used to get them yeah. in our stockings. Yep, yep. Well, you know, it was the 70s. It oh, yeah. Completely kill you, maybe. So, <laughs> Well, Victoria, I'm so glad we took a little time to catch up today. And I want to thank you again for joining us here on Throwback Nation Radio. And victoriafedden.com is the website. You can learn more about what Victoria is up to, her writings and her new book, which I'm finger, fingers crossed that at least, uh, you know, quarantine time and being away from each other, that gives you a little chance to finish up what you're working on and share some of these great nostalgic stories that so much of, so many of us are just loving uh, this oh, holiday thank season. thank you. Yeah, I have a lot of them. I'm... I'm full of nostalgia. I, I just love those old memories. And I love being able to remind people of all of the, the good moments from the past. Well, we'll be soaking them up uh, now through Christmas Day and beyond. And Victoria, thank you so much for spending a little time with us today. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. And I hope that you and your family and all of your listeners have a wonderful holiday season. We'll stay safe. We'll do our best. And we'll get that water, Watergate salad. If, if, that doesn't, <laughs> if that doesn't kill us, we'll, we'll, we'll be all good. So Sounds good.